what's going on guys? So today I wanna to talk to you about how we can introduce acute chronic workload to enhance overall workability and to minimize the risk of injury and overtraining or non-functional overreaching. So today our objectives are going to be identifying a training workload to balance out in an increased performance. Also in the same sense, we're trying to minimize the overtraining effect, right? We're trying to minimize you know, doing too much in a particular week and in a particular month so that we can keep progressions going, we can get that super compensation needed to allow for the athlete to perform at their best, all right? So the tools that we're gonna utilize are going to be rate of perceived exertion or RPE, right? So we're gonna basically measure out the intensities of a given task, right? And we're gonna scale it from a one to 10. All right, rate of perceived exertion, meaning how hard from a one to 10 scale, 10 being the hardest, one being nothing at all, pretty much. All right, so our goal really for now, we're gonna primarily live in a six to a 10 RPE range. All right, six to 10 RPE range. Now I also go over this in real detail in my mentorship program, so make sure you guys check that out. I go over all my methodologies and protocols there too as well. All right. The other tool that we're gonna use is that acute chronic workload. All right, so basically what we're trying to do is find out the ratio that is comprised of a fighter's fitness and fatigue, all right? We're gonna be doing a rolling average calculation. So we're gonna take those four weeks and we're going to add them all up and then divide by the particular week and the entire month of training, all right? Again, we wanna make sure the acute workload is gonna be one week or seven days total. And then the chronic workload is gonna be four weeks or 28 days total. And we're gonna find the average acute workload through there, all right? Now, the protocol that we're gonna utilize, right, we're gonna calculate the given training hours of all modalities that determine the subjective RPE for each fighter, right? Then we're gonna calculate the total number of hours trained, all right? Then we're gonna go ahead and multiply the total RPE to the total time worked given to the arbitrary unit, okay? So again, I'll go over more details in a minute, all right? But keep the average, right? Keep the chronic workload average to no more than 150% of overall workload. So again, we wanna make sure that we're keeping in a range that is gonna be relative for recovery, but also increasing adaptations and increasing in performance altogether, all right? So no more than 150, no less than 80%. We wanna stay in those ranges and I'll go into more detail in a minute, so let's do this. So now we're gonna go over the specific training modalities that I wanna to utilize to incorporate the acute chronic workload ratio. All right, so first and foremost, we're gonna take the total load and we're also gonna work in the specific load. Now the total load, the training modalities are gonna be based upon the skills training and that's usually looking at grappling, boxing, kickboxing, and overall drilling, right? This is gonna be a lot more uh, accumulation of fatigue just based upon overall volume, right, inside of training. And then we're also gonna take into account our strength and power work, and that's usually my condensed conjugate method. Now, I talk a lot about this inside my mentorship program, so I'm not gonna take a whole lot of time here. And then I've had some videos in the past that you can watch too as well. So, another one we're gonna take into account is speed and agility, right? Speed, agility, change of direction, right? The ability to react, all right, reaction timing. And that's also gonna be in implemented inside the condensed conjugate method too as well, all right? Again, I'm trying to make sure I'm maximizing my time because I only have usually two times a week with them inside a training camp or inside a fight camp. And I wanna make sure that they're getting all of these, uh, all these training means incorporated in so that we can enhance their performance there. The conditioning, we're gonna work through a high-low method by Charlie Francis. The reason why I like this is because we wanna minimize a lot of that glycolytic work, that mid-range work, because of, of the fact that they are gonna be doing a lot of that inside their skills training. But if a fighter needs it, we'll put that into place. And I go over that too as well inside the coaching program. So make sure you guys check that out, all right? And it's gonna be concurrent with the weight training. So again, that's gonna be all encompassing inside the weight room two times a week and then i'm also going to give them some aerobic conditioning aerobic power work around the strength training work so that we can get that endurance up to par all right now when you're talking about specific loading now this is the modalities of training that is going to be the highest simulation of a fight so you're looking at an rpe of nine to ten right and that's usually going to be sparring live goes and wrestling live goes and the issue here, and this is why I put it on its own categories, because it has the highest risk of injury. 
And that's due to the fact that it's very hard to control the environment, right? Guys are trying to work their game. They're trying to go all out, maybe have a fight coming up so they're nervous, things like that. And, and especially in my perspective of American Top Team, these guys are working their hardest, man. And they got guys that are very elite in their sport. So again, they're gonna go at it, you know, iron sharpens iron type of deal. So again, it's very important that we take this into account when you're talking about overall workload to increase performance, but also mitigate fatigue and also the risk of injury. All right, so now that you've seen this, now we're gonna go ahead and do somewhat of a mock acute chronic workload ratio format so that you can see what my fighters got to go through and how we can you know put together a solid system and plan in order so that they can increase their performance but not get too far into fatigue let's do it so here we go so now i'm going to go ahead and put the numbers together to understand acute chronic workload for the athletes now this is based off a an american top team schedule so again i'm going to take into account the total load and the specific load for each training modality and then we're going to put it all together throughout the calculations. Now remember, the scale for this is we wanna maintain or stay in between 1.0 to 1.35, not going anywhere further than 1.5, all right? So we wanna stay under 150%, all right? So again, again, this is going to be acute chronic workload average, okay? Now, with the skills training, they're usually gonna be doing around a seven uh, seven sessions throughout the week. So again, we're working in the acute range. So they're gonna do seven sessions throughout the week. The time duration is usually gonna last about 60 minutes, right? And that RPE or rate of perceived exertion, the intensity is usually gonna be around a seven, right? It's not gonna be super hard. Again, they're just drilling, they're working on their technique, all right? So we add up the sum total and I got 2,940 for the total bear. All right, and that's just for the skills training. Now we're gonna go ahead and go into the strength and power. Now I always know from the condensed model that I am gonna do two times a week. It's gonna last me about 60 minutes, right? And the RPE is gonna be high, it's gonna be a 10 because again, we're getting after it in a controlled environment, right? That's gonna usually end up being 1200. So again, the overall total is 1200. Now the speed and agility, we're gonna do two times a week again. It's gonna usually last about 15 minutes. Right, and the RPE again is gonna be around a seven, all right? That's gonna usually be a calculated approach so that sum of all of that is gonna be 210, all right? Now the conditioning, we're gonna do four days a week. It's usually gonna last about 30 minutes, right? And the RPE is gonna be about an eight. So make sure you take into account all those different types of training methods of, uh, of conditioning so that you can average it out and put it, on, put it on the paper, all right? So the average there is gonna be 960, okay? Now for the total load, right? The acute for that week is going to be 5,310. All right. Now I'm going to go ahead and go over each week. So that 30 or that 30 days or 28 days there, we're going to go ahead and calculate each week. And then we're going to divide that by four. All right. So usually I get like 4,750, 4,750, 5,030, right? 5,000 and then 4,900. And we add those all up and then we divide by four we get 400 or 4920 all right so now we have the acute and the chronic workload average for the 30 days and th through the seven days all right now we're going to go ahead and go into the specific loading before we measure all, all out right so specific loading sparring is going to be two times a week usually it's 60 minutes in total right throughout the entire time right you're not you're not sparring for 60 minutes, but you're still getting after it. You're gonna be training, right? You get the warm up and then you go into the sparring. So again, 60 minutes there. We're gonna times that by 10 because again, like I said, the intensities are high, right? And that's gonna usually be about 1200, okay? Same thing with wrestling, right? We have one day a week of hard wrestling with Steve Mako, right? And he puts them guys through the ringer. So it's about 90 minutes and it's definitely gonna be an RPE of 10, all right? Now, the reason why I'm saying that is because the fact that they cannot breathe in there. They, they're constantly going. If you ever had a wrestling practice, you know how it goes, all right? So again, this can be altered too throughout the weeks. Obviously, you may not even do a wrestling session in one week or something along the lines of that, but you would take that into account in your chronic workload, all right? So again, that's 900. So we added those two up, right? And we got 2,100, okay? So 2,100 was the acute load there for that week. And then we added the chronic basically chronic workload for the, the entire 30 days, 900, 2100, 2000, and 1900. And we ended up getting 1,725 after we divided by four, 
All right, so now I'm gonna take the two here from the, the acute and the chronic workload, right? So we are going to divide the acute into the, the chronic workload and we have gotten 1.07. So as you can see, we're in our range of appropriate, you know, overall workload there, all right? Now we're gonna come down to the, uh, the special load, right? And we're gonna take 2100, we're gonna divide one, divide that 1725 and we get 1.20. Again, we're staying in that range, all right? Now, again, we trained all of this in the week and throughout the month. So we have to add those two up, right? To see exactly how much overall workload from the skills, training, the strength and conditioning, the, the, the speed, the con you know, all of that there, and then the special loading with the sparring and the wrestling. We put that all together. So I go ahead, I'm gonna go ahead and add up the two, right? From the TL to the SL, right? The total load to specific load, add that up, add the two chronic loads up. And we're gonna divide that total and get 1.11. So again, we're staying in that range that we need to, to maintain progression, but not overwork them or cause a risk of injury. All right, guys. So. Again, I go over specific details on the condensed model. I go over specific details on uh, training methodologies based upon particular uh, times in camp inside my mentorship program. Check it out. It's probably in the link in the description and in the bio there. Go ahead and check it out. Make sure you hit me up. And if you have any questions, you know what to do. Hit the comments down below. Thanks again for watching. I hope this was helpful. Let me know if you like this video by hitting the like button. Hit the notification so you know when my videos come out. And I'll see you again next time. Peace.